Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, on a journey down the macabre corridors of medical history, where today we delve into a haunting tale of disease that has struck terror into the hearts of civilizations for centuries. I'm talking about leprosy. A disease steeped in mystery and misconception. But fear not, for by the end of this video, you'll be armed with the knowledge to be able to pierce through even the darkest of tales about this horrifying disease. But first, let's rewind the clock and uncover the origins of this sinister affliction. So leprosy, or Hansen's disease, as it's now known today, has been haunting humanity for centuries. It's been mentioned in texts dating as far back as 600 BC, with accounts of it ostracizing those that have been afflicted, banishing them to colonies, and even branding them as cursed. And believe it or not, but it's still not something that we've completely vanquished from our communities, with over 200,000 new cases being reported worldwide per year. So what exactly causes this dreaded disease? Enter Mycobacterium leperi, the villain behind the veil. This microscopic menace infiltrates the body, targeting nerves, skin, and mucous membranes, leading to a cascade of different symptoms, ranging from mild to severe. Now, you might be wondering, how does one catch this ghastly germ? Well, contrary to popular belief, leprosy isn't highly contagious. The disease doesn't spread from just casual contact from a person who's got leprosy, for example, shaking their hand or hugging them or even sharing a meal. It's only really transmitted from prolonged close contact with an untreated individual. You can think of it like this, you're more likely to catch a yawn than leprosy. And due to this misconception for millennia, a diagnosis of leprosy meant a life sentence of social isolation. In the past, people afflicted by leprosy were ripped from their families and shrouded with prejudice before finally being exiled for lifelong quarantines. For example, in the US, patients were confined to a handful of remote settlements where, over time, a crude existence evolved into one with small touchstones of normalcy. Patients were consistently deprived of their fundamental civil liberties, that is, their ability to work, to move freely and see loved ones, to vote, and to have families of their own. To the extent where some of those who bore children had their babies forcibly removed. By the 1940s, after a treatment emerged for the condition, and the science made clear that the majority of a population had a natural immunity to it, other countries began to abolish their compulsory isolation policies. But in the US, even as leprosy patients' health and condition improved, old stigmas, fear of contagion, and outdated laws kept many confined for decades further. A tiny number of Hansen disease patients still remain at Kalalupapa, a leprosy hospital established in 1866 on a remote but breathtakingly beautiful spit of land on the Hawaiian island of Molaki. Thousands had lived and died at this settlement over the ensuing years, but by 2008, the settlement's population had dwindled down to 24. And by 2015, only six remained full-time, despite being cured a long time ago. Remember, many of the residents first arrived on this island as children, and so have known no other life. But now, let's look at the telltale signs of leprosy. From disfiguring skin lesions to nerve damage that can lead to a loss of sensation and muscle weakness, this disease paints a grim portrait indeed. Now prepare yourselves for a descent into the darkest depths of leprosy's clinical manifestations. If you thought horror movies were spine-chilling, wait until you hear about these. Imagine waking up one day to find that your fingers and toes are gnarled and twisted like the branches of a haunted forest. This is the grim reality for those suffering from leprosy's most severe form, that is, leperomatous leprosy. 
Due to the nerve damage that some of these patients suffer, it would leave parts of their body feeling numb, making them susceptible to unknowingly getting injured. Affected body parts sometimes become gangrenous, requiring amputation, leaving people with further disfigurements. But that's not all. As the disease progresses, it can devour facial features like a ravenous beast, leaving behind a visage straight out of a nightmare. And let's not forget the eyes, the windows to the soul, as they say. In Leporomatous Leprosy, the eyes can become engulfed by darkness, leading to blindness, a fate far worse than any ghostly apparition. But fear not, for even in the face of such horrors, there is still hope. With advancements in medical science, we can intervene before the shadow of leprosy completely consumes you. Thanks to modern medicine, leprosy is no longer the life sentence it once was. Antibiotics such as rifampicin and dapazone can vanquish the bacteria, while surgeries and physiotherapy help to alleviate the aftermath the disease has had on your body. And what about the prognosis, I hear you ask? Well, with early detection and proper treatment, the prognosis is surprisingly pretty positive. With many individuals living fulfilling lives, shattering the myths that once shrouded this disease. Ah, and before I forget, whatever happened to those remaining patients that lived on the island of Malaki? Well, the patients that resided there have been free to leave since 1969. 30 years on, and the remaining patients have been given the choice of either to move on with an annual service fee of $46,000, to remain at the facility, or to be transferred to a home for the elders. In most cases, many chose to stay, having grown accustomed to what the New York Times described in 2008 as the counterintuitive twining of loneliness and community. Here, in isolated outposts they might not have chosen, fellow patients, health workers and pastoral staff became family. And for these last remaining few, this distant and isolated location became something resembling a home. And there you have it guys, the chilling chronicle of leprosy from its ancient origins to its modern day management. Always remember that knowledge is our greatest weapon against fear, so spread the word and until next time, stay curious, stay informed and most of all stay healthy. But. If you're free just now and you want to see more, I'll leave two more videos up here for your viewing pleasure. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.